uh, fifth on your list, Julian Strother at yeah. Gonzaga, who I don't think should enter the NBA draft. You um, don't? I do not. Okay. Um, but I thought you made a point um, that if true – um, would be at least a reason to maybe lean that direction. Like he has shown himself to be very good at a handful of things while being a, um, a role player for an incredible program. Um, you know, it, it appears if he's back at Gonzaga, his role will be increased, um, elevated a bit. And perhaps, you know, that won't be great for him. There's an old saying in, you know, draft circles, like, uh, don't show them what you can't do until they pay you. And, and and he hasn't really been asked at Gonzaga to show too much of what he can't do. But with an increased role, perhaps he's asked to do more. And what you find out is that, you know, what everybody thinks is, you know, they'll ask me to do more and I'll show them all I can do. Well, maybe you'll show them you can't do it. And so, you know, do you get out, you know, at, at a time when your draft reputation has been possibly maximized or do you come back to try to be a to play a bigger role on a prominent team and show that you can be a uh a person who has a bigger role on a prominent college team i i could i could talk through that a couple of different ways yeah i mean six foot seven small forward uh the the role that he had at gonzaga this past season i think accentuated his, his strengths in a way that was really valuable to nba evaluators um you know, he shot 37% from three. He averaged almost 12 points per game. Just a really high-level role player. And I think there's some mystique surrounding him in that, oh, man, he was, he was you know, Chet Holmgren was really good. Andrew Nimhard was really good. But, hey, is, is is Julian Strother, like, maybe that dude from that team? You know, and there's some there's some wonderment to him, like, hey, what, what could he be in a different situation? What could he be in a different system? And – Sometimes those guys turn out to be stars. You know, maybe maybe he comes back to Gonzaga next season and he's just an All-American and he's awesome. Maybe he comes back to Gonzaga and he's averaging 12 points per game and he's shooting 25% from three. Like, I think there's a realistic chance that, you know, maybe he's he's maybe not the same guy that people expect he would be in a bigger role. So um, right now I have him as, you know, kind of a late first round, early second round grade. Um just just from what we saw from him at Gonzaga this past season, I think um, his his stock is about at the point where I would imagine he ends up going. Um, if he if he wants to bet on himself and come back to Gonzaga next season, I you know more power to him. He could end up just being that dude next season for Gonzaga. Could be the number one option, but um, I, I think the decision is is actually kind of a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more complicated. His role, I think, would obviously increase next season at Gonzaga, especially with, with Chet gone and potentially with Drew Timmy gone. We'll see what happens there. Um, but uh, Strother, Strother's interesting, just in great size, obviously, plays a play, plays a valuable role, good shooter, like just an archetypical, like, long wing who can, who can be a high-level role player in the NBA. Yeah, for me, um, my concern with Strother would be that he might not get picked. You know, yeah. like you, you really fight it. Like he, like you've got him late first, early second, totally reasonable. Also might not get picked. Yeah. And if I'm choosing between might not get picked and, you know, being a prominent player at Gonzaga and capitalizing on those NIO opportunities, I like, I'm probably leaning toward that. But, um, you know, as I've said a million times, uh, what's important to me um, isn't always important to a young person. So I'll, I'll let him figure it out. But uh, the risk there would be he enters the draft and then finds out um, he's not a draftable player. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Drew Timmy. He was not on your list, but he's a big topic of conversation. Obviously, All-American who is trying to decide what to do, just like the rest of these players. Ultimately, what do you think he does? I think everybody is assuming right now he's going to be back at Gonzaga, but he surely hasn't said that. I assume he's coming back. Um, Timmy is an interesting one in that, you know, I I would not have him as a as a draft pick. He's not in my top sixty rankings, and I think the current NIL environment is such that he would probably make su substantial money at Gonzaga as as the face of a top five, top ten program. Um, he's easily, I think, probably the most recognizable college basketball player who would be returning next season. So you know, if, if you're Drew Timmy, like 
you're choosing between, you know, maybe not getting drafted or being the face of college basketball next season, the face of Gonzaga basketball, um, the chance to make probably hundreds of thousands, if not maybe more. Um, to me, I just assume based off that, that he's returning to Gonzaga, but what else does he have to prove at Gonzaga too? Like he's already an all American. He's already been to a national championship game. Obviously he probably wants to win it all and he hasn't done that yet, but outside that, like he doesn't really have too much else to prove. So in that sense, if he wants to turn pro and start his professional clock, you know, I, that, that wouldn't be totally surprising either. I, I think his options would be limited in the NBA. Um, but I've been wrong about evaluating bigs before. Yeah, there's a chance that he ends up sticking or, you know, maybe he goes plays overseas. Uh, either way, I think he's, 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 got a, he's got a long NBA career or a long professional career ahead of him one way or another. Yeah, if I'm Drew Timmy, I'll keep this simple. I, I would not have him projected as a top 60 pick either. And by the way, we should point out, um, there aren't 60 picks in this draft. Oh, you're right. Right. So like yeah. everybody keeps saying 60 and I know it's just a, it's just a big round number, <laughs> but like there's a couple of t franchises that don't have picks. I think, I think we go to 58 this year. So there's only 58 spots to get selected with Timmy. Uh, to me, this is simple. Um, I, I don't think he's getting picked, but he it could be a star of the, the star of college basketball. Yeah. Like what, what are we doing? And if he can't get that money at Gonzaga and I have no reason to think that he can't, but if for some reason, like the money's not there, the way it's there at uh, Kentucky, or mm -hmm. the way it's there at Miami, if I really can't get that, then I'm just putting myself up for sale. Yeah, you know, I you know I would have just uh, now. I don't think he entered the transfer portal in time, so like that would be a problem. But like that's what I would have if I didn't think I could get the big like yo Nigel Pag just got four hundred thousand dollars to play at Miami this next season. Like, if I can't get twice as much as that to be Drew Timmy at Gonzaga, I go somewhere else and get twice as much of that to be Drew Timmy somewhere because that's available for him somewhere. He, to me, is the best example of can make way more money and be in a way better situation next season playing college basketball than playing professional basketball because playing professional basketball really might be, you know, G League. I mean, that really might be his life. You know, you could either play on national television twice a week, impact arenas for a top 10 team and be a player of the year candidate or play in the G League. What? Like, no, nah, this is easy for me. I mean, he could do whatever he wants to do, like I always say. But Drew Timmy, um, it should be um, it, it is a blessing for Drew Timmy that he plays in the NIL, uh, in the dawn of the NIL era, yep. because I, I think the contrast between what's available to him as a professional and what's theoretically available to him as a college basketball player, the difference between those two things is as, as, as great as the, dis, as, as the difference between those two things for literally anybody in college basketball, I think. So um, I'd be surprised if he's if he's not back in school. But he, again, he hasn't said that yet. And easily one of the most marketable college basketball yes. players too. like super likable. Um, you know, at, at the end of the season in the NCAA tournament, he was doing the, the interview and on television, you know, is he's biting his lip every right. 2.6 seconds, like F word, D word, <laughs> S word. You know, it's just like um, it, his demeanor, the way he comes off is just like, you just kind of like the guy and the the big mustache, just like the, the burly look, like he's a, he's a very likable person and he's already had some, you know, promotional deals locally, at least in, in Spokane. But I, I would imagine, um, you know, there's going to be opportunities for him. If you're, if you're Drew Timmy and you're not getting opportunities, like what are we doing? I, you know, maybe you start just promoting the life wallet app, just uh, see if you can <laughs> send, send, send the Batman signal to John Ruiz. But like um yeah. Like, I, I mean that sincerely. Like, I know the deadline to enter the transfer portal has passed, but like, if you are a player like Drew Timmy and you cannot get big money at your school for whatever reason, and again, I have no reason to think that's true. I think he'll get everything he needs at Gonzaga, but you should, you should not be there anymore. You should go to a, there are places that exist that will put major money in your pocket. And when you are Drew Timmy, those places should be available to you. So I, I suspect he'll be a, you know, a, a, something close to or in excess of a million dollar college basketball player next season.